Are Japanese glass pens different from Western glass pens? Well, yes and no. They are the same concept in which you dip a glass pen into ink to write with. But basically, I think the whole attitude about glass pens and how it's used is different. Just to give you a peek into that, this ink here has metal filings in it. And yes, I said metal filings. It's just a quick refresher from last week's video. Inkanuma is a phenomenon here in Japan, especially Tokyo, and it means ink swamp, which is probably better interpreted as ink fever. It's mostly young women, and the end goal is testing or cataloging or playing with inks more so than using them in a fountain pen. This pen's nib width is one of my widest and has an opal on the end. One of the reasons the Ink Kanuma ladies use glass pens is that it's easy to change ink, much like for Western users. Many users all over the world use a glass pen to test out inks. But I think it's so much more so here in Japan. When I was shopping for one of my glass pens, the sales lady was completely dumbfounded that I had talked about using some of these inks with a fountain pen. She was like, why? It's just so much trouble to change inks. This pen has rose quartz chips suspended in a liquid. So another reason that Inkonuma ladies use glass pens is that they particularly enjoy using a glass pen. They come in different nib widths, and also they make different sounds when you use them on paper. Many of these ladies are fans of particular glass pen makers and collect all their models. For these ladies, swatching, ink testing, and cataloging their inks is the actual goal of the ink itself. I got this pen because of its fine point. Though the ink is the main goal, many of these ladies actually use glass pens for writing, like letters and journaling. So much so that each glass pen that I looked at, the sales lady told me how many Japanese characters I could write with one dip. Some nibs were such that you could write up to 40 characters. This is a stub nib glass pen. For many people, it's a ritualistic way to relax. You put on your favorite tunes and you play with color. The beauty of the pen itself is important. And as a result, there's a wide range of beautiful glass pens, some with, like you saw, crystal chips, some with different kinds of swirled colored glass, some have colored liquid on the inside too. There are crystal bowls and vase-like looking containers in which you can decant your ink into so that you can have a more enjoyable ink swatching experience. So let's take a look at my ink swatching setup. You can see one of my ink syringes there because I'm an ink crackhead. And my ocean jasper mineral box that holds loops and things like that. And then my basket that holds my planners, my journals, and my ink swatching books. And then there's this really weird setup. Here you see um, empty spice bottles that I have filled with water, a container with eyedroppers, and then my setup that holds all of my glass pens. I think this pen holder was really made for fountain pens, but I've kind of converted it to a glass pen setup. Let's take a closer look. On the top shelf is a couple bottles of ink, a beaker, three ink puddles, another beaker, and some more ink. And then on the top row for pens is my glass pen with the opal in it, a flex dip pen, and then my Hario thin point pen. On the next level is my fountain pen with um, rose quartz chips in it and also the stub nib pen with a cover. 
like an Inkanuma person, I have all these different accoutrements for enjoying my ink. One of these accoutrements is called an ink candle, and it's made by Shokido. And it's so that you can tilt your bottle of ink so you have better access to the ink while you're dipping your pen. This ink is put out by the Tous glass pen maker, and it's called Poison Narcissus. It's made for glass pens only. What is supposed to increase your enjoyment is that it actually lights the bottle of ink from underneath. And then you can push it one more time and it flashes so you can have a flashing bottle of ink for your ink swatching enjoyment. Here is my bottle of poison lit from underneath. When I mentioned ink puddles as being one of my accoutrements, you were probably asking, what is that? These two ink puddles are sold by TAG, the same people that make your Kyo no Oto inks. Basically, a puddle is made so that you can decant a little bit of ink into the puddle and then use several kinds of ink at the same time to mix or to have color gradient without messing up your ink inside of your ink bottle itself. They all have tops or covers so that you could continue doing the same thing, say the next day or whatever, without drying out your ink. These puddles were a big hit at the last Ink Numa show, and they were almost impossible to get. This ink puddle by Hario, you can buy with a matching small beaker, and it's kind of odd looking. It looks like something out of a laboratory. You basically put your ink in that small little bowl-like contraption on the top of that beaker looking thing. I feel like a mad scientist when I use this one. Because the stub nib glass pen is kind of hard to get now, I went ahead and purchased a cover for the nib. It's also sold by the glass pen makers. As for my homegrown accoutrements, I have this old ink bottle with eyedroppers in it. And then I took these spice bottles and then filled them with water so I could use them for cleaning my glass dip pens. So here is my setup and looking at it, I'm pretty sure I'm drowning in the ink swamp. But it's a great way to go. Let me do a couple of swatches so you can see how I do my ink Inkanuma thing. As this is supposed to be an enjoyable experience, I'll have a cup of coffee. These are quite popular in Japan. They're single serving drip coffee. It's kind of like a Keurig, but you don't need a machine. That outer envelope that I took this out of is made of plastic. It can be put in plastic recycling. And then this part here is all made of paper and then the coffee and you just hang it over your cup. Then you just pour boiling water through the top. You can find these at all the grocery stores and also specialty coffee shops will have them with their own coffee in it. And like a Keurig, they're nitrogen flushed, which means they don't oxidize as quickly and so your coffee stays fresh. I think Starbucks has a version of this in the States maybe called origami. I got this coffee cup in a coffee shop in southern Japan. It shows the lady in a kimono enjoying coffee. Now that we got our tunes and our coffee, let's start swatching. To keep ink from bleeding through on the paper, I'll use a shitajiki or writing mat under my paper. The ink earlier I talked about with metal filings in it is from a line called Comet from Tono and Limbs. Of course, it's from Tono and Limbs. I'm using my widest nib first. All the colors in the Comet line have metal filings in it for the shimmer. This color is called Hell Bop after the Hell Bop Comet of 1997. It's a glass pen only ink. And of course, my answer to that is that's what God made Platinum Preppies for. But I'm saving the Preppy and the Pilot Parallel 6.0 for another video called Crazy Inks. That'll be a fun one. 
after making a big swab of ink with my opal pen, I use my rose quartz pen for a thinner line. And then for the thinnest line, I use my Hario pen. And the metal shavings in here make it kind of difficult for my very fine nib pen to write with. I used to think that glass pen only inks were kind of limiting, but I kind of look at it a different way now. Here's the stub nib glass pen. I kind of see these glass pen only inks as kind of freeing where the pen maker can put all kinds of weird stuff and weird properties in it and not have to worry about clogging up a fountain pen so you can play with some more properties like metal shavings. Let me speed this up a bit. Now you're thinking, why would somebody want to put metal shavings into an ink? But it really made for a different kind of shimmer. For a lack of better way to explain it, it was like a harder shimmer, kind of more all one uniform look. I use a hundred year old dip pen to make flex writing so I can see what that looks like. Flex writing is pretty much well non-existent here in Japan. They don't really care about how things look in flex. And then after it's dried a bit, I add water to the big splotch to see if any other colors come out. Here's the dried copy. And as you can see, not very many colors came out of the water wash here. I'll do the chromatography in a more in-depth in my Crazy Inks video. Here you can see a little bit of that hard shine that came with the metal filings. And here's a little more with the stub nib glass pen. Now we'll fill this Hario glass puddle with um, hydrangea tears from Lyctrope. And I have Sessai Kayengata Doki in another puddle. Here we'll go back and forth with both inks so that I can have a kind of gradient. And you use the puddles to keep from contaminating the individual bottles of ink. Here's the dried copy and it's a nice effect. People actually like write letters this way too. If you don't have puddles, you can put the ink directly on the paper, especially if it's Tomoa River or if you have a Shitajiki writing mat underneath. Here I'm using complementary colors so you can see the real difference. Both are poison inks. And on cotton paper, I'm going to do what's called a gem swatch. First, you add water with a brush on any kind of template you want. The most common is a circle. And then add ink. You can blot it up, add more water, or add more ink, whatever effect you want. And pull off the template and then add whatever writing you want. And here's my finished copy. The downside of glass pens is, well, it's made of glass. So you need to be careful with the nib, especially with some of these really fine ones. There are glass pens set like in Lucite with a cap that you can travel with, but for the most part, I use my glass pens at home. Be very careful about messing with the nib. I tried smoothing a glass pen maybe like five or six years ago. I figured it was a little scratchy and I'd smooth it out and it was a disaster. The pen never worked again. If you do have problems with any of these glass nibs, the makers tell you to go ahead and send it back and they'll repolish the nib for you. I like how these glass pens sound. I'll be doing a giveaway on my Instagram with this glass pen that has an opal in the section. It'll be either Monday or Tuesday. And I wanted to make it of things that are difficult to get outside of Japan. So I'm also including this thing called an ink book, which is made by Shokido. It's laser cut decorated of press board to look like and act like a book. Inside, you can put Tamiya sample size bottles. It has a little pull-out drawer on the bottom, and then it holds 12 Tamiya size bottles. I'll also include the bottles and a few more so you can share with friends. 
I'll also add in the Shokido ink candle because everybody needs flashing bottles of ink. Join us on the Inkanuma dark side. We have lots of ink.